Uh, so this afternoon, I have the great pleasure to be joined by Sebastian Ross, a Polish businessman and politician who lives and works in London in the United Kingdom. Sebastian is a member of the Liberty, Liberty Party in Poland, and he ran for the European Parliament elections in 2019. Today, I hope Sebastian can give me a good insight into Polish politics, um, the general mood and political disposition of his fellow countrymen and women, both in the West and back home in Poland, as well as getting some of Sebastian's opinions on libertarian issues and politics in general. So thanks for joining me today, Sebastian. Great to be with you. Welcome. Okay. So the Liberty Party, uh, you'll have to help me with the pronunciation. Wolnosk, is it? Wolnosk, which means uh, that, that's V. We don't have V letter in the alphabet, it's V. Wolność, which is basically liberty, that's it. Wolność, okay. So can you tell me a little bit about your party? Uh, what are the core beliefs or main principles of the party? Yeah, typical libertarian party, which is uh, quite popular compared to like Western libertarian parties. Uh, I know, I don't know if there any exist in Ireland, for example. I know the one exists in the UK is, is not really popular, it's quite small. Uh, don't know about any other European countries. I could say similar, uh, not party really, because Ron Paul never established uh, any political party, rather he was uh, himself trying to become a US president. But yeah, our views as a party uh, are in general, if, if anyone uh, follows Ron Paul, we could say, yeah, we, we, we exactly the same positions on, on most of the issues. Okay, so it's a libertarian to the core then. And how long how long have you be, how long have you guys been up and running as a party? Oh yeah, our leader our leader is talking to people for the last forty years. Okay. Uh, Janusz Korwin Mikke. I don't know if you ever saw him in the European Parliament. He was uh, he was there for a while. He quit himself, which is uh, unusual unusual thing as well. Uh, he's very honourable man. That was the deal. Four of them went to, into European Parliament, and the deal was: after two years, we're quitting all of us, and we're giving the uh, uh, our places uh, to younger guys. Whoever was second on the list, mm -hmm. we put them there, just give them a chance as well. Obviously, you know, in European Parliament, you make a lot of money. So when it happened, <clears throat> when they four of them went to the EU, uh, two of them straight away ran away because money, right? And uh, so Janusz korwin minke straight away established new party because they stole the name uh, and he kept his word after two and a half years, I believe, he quit. He gave his place to uh, another MP, uh, MEP, uh, then uh, Rob uh, Dobromir Sosnierz, is a very, very difficult name to remember, but he was quite, quite vocal as well in EU and he, he concentrated on the uh, Polish uh, politics again. But yeah, like I said, you, you won't see, uh, you know, things like that from any other people in really in any country. I believe just quit your uh, huge salary and uh, part of your pension as well. Because, you know, you, uh, the parliamentarians, they get pension once they gone. Or obviously, the longer they're there, the more money they get. He just said, you, my word, I keep my word. OK, there you go, mate. Okay. Or those two guys split, just okay. went away and said, we're independent. Oh, no, no, sorry. No, we're not independent. Uh, we taking the name of the party okay, because okay, yeah. uh, you too controversial. Now we are gonna build up something better, new like Boris Johnson, like build back better. And obviously, no one followed them because uh, people really libertarians they know Janusz Korwin Mikke for years, forty years. If you saw his uh, speeches forty years ago, and now just so he straight away said, "Okay, guys, if you say so, bye bye. I'm gonna establish new parties straight away. New party grew, but obviously." Uh, the reason, you know, because they split, we didn't get to a uh, Polish uh, parliament uh, a few months later after he got to you because uh, because uh, we got in Poland is a threshold you have to cross to get into parliament, which is unconstitutional, illegal. Okay. Yeah, this uh, the 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 election should be like proportional. If you get two percent, you get, for example, two MPs, or whatever. But the Polish government uh, established like five percent threshold. Okay. Threshold. So we so we got four point seventy six, and then half of the percent. So altogether we would have five something. We would go. We'll get there. We didn't. But to be honest, you know what happens is uh, he, the whole Polish 
parliamentary and voting system is set up to not let Janusz Korwin-Mikke to get into parliament. Because yeah. what happened, he, he was an MP years ago in 1990s. And because of him, uh, the government collapsed as well uh, one night. What he did was, uh, obviously, the lots of parliamental parliamentarians, including our president, Lech Wałęsa, which was very, very popular, was a uh, secret services and KGB agent. And uh, some people knew about it already. And what happened, obviously, um, you have to vote to, and there were, he quickly, uh, most of the parties went on the break, or the big parties went on the break, eating, drinking, whatever. He wrote quickly uh, the small, I wouldn't know uh, how to how to describe it in English, what's the word in English, because uh, um, you have to vote on some certain issue, yeah? So he quickly wrote on the, that we have to reveal all KGB agents. And okay. only his group was left in the parliament because they were eating, drinking, like I said. They voted quickly. They they voted it over and they had to obviously write it down and they say, okay, that's a law now. From tomorrow, we have to reveal all KGB agents. What wow. they did. Yeah, and what they did uh, was kind of like a putsch, you know, and over the night, the government collapsed only to not let this happen and obviously new elections and uh, he never got back to the parliament because they set the threshold and he's, he's the enemy public enemy number one in poland yeah i'm not surprised <laughs> yeah but he's still around he's still around he's 78 <clears throat> now uh, he's still in politics he's currently his mp but yeah and he's very very libertarian person Okay, just um, the solidarity guy, Lech, uh, what's his name, Lech Farad. Lech Wałęsa, yeah. yeah. He was in the KGB as well? Yeah, 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 but he, he was <laughs> on the list as well, he was on the list huh. as well. And uh, yeah, wow. what happened basically, for people who don't know, uh, Solidarność, yeah, was a big, big movement in the um, 80s, end of 70s, uh, beginning of 80s. But then government was afraid uh, they may take, take over the power. So they... Uh, they issued like a martial, martial law, 1981, 13th of December. They arrested all the leaders of the Solidarity, Solidarność, and they started talking to them. And if you were hardcore, like anti-government, out. You you not be anymore in the Solidarność. And they picked all the agents. You, Valenza, you, okay. you, okay, you good, you my people now, sign the letter, yeah, you work for us now. And they and they built uh, in 1984. 1983, the martial law ended, and became and uh, new Solidarność uh, was established with agents already. And, and now, yeah. was, was this widely known in Poland? No, not then, not then. Yeah. Obviously, not then. People like Janusz Korwin-Mikke, who was always close to there and was interested in stuff like that, he knew. But obviously, who would listen to the freak yeah. guy? Here, who's there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And but that was the chance because there were then 1988, 89 free elections. Mm. First, let's so called free elections. It wasn't free elections, people yeah. think. So the party said, we, we take 51% of seats and the rest you can okay. split 49% uh, percent of the seats. But somehow Janusz Korobnik got in there. And like I said, eventually he got them. Uh, okay. and they had to vote on the issue. Uh, parliament's remaining, his people only, I think it was like 15 of them, whatever. And okay. they, uh, yeah, upvoted this and it uh, became a law. And then, oh. like I said, next day, bam, collapse of the government. I don't remember what was the reason they, they, they made up some reason there's something wrong with the government down a new elections and he, he didn't get there. Okay, so he's a, he's a dangerous man, which is good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I mean, generally today now, how popular is the party and how, how did you do in the recent Polish elections and the Euro, Euro elections? Yeah, what happened then, uh, we didn't get to the uh, parliament. What they did, uh, they, uh, hmm, we didn't get to the uh, parliament and then was a new EU elections uh, in 2019 now, was it? Last year, was it? May, I think, yeah, May 2019. And uh, as you know, many, many Polish people uh, are all over the Europe UK, I think, is that in Europe, the UK is the biggest uh, population of Polish people. I'll, I'll say million easy. Ireland, some of them. So we started, uh, I, I followed I followed Janusz Korwin-Mikke for years. Then I became a party member and uh, he came to visit us to, to see Polish community. And he said to us, guys, one of you must uh, 
at least be on the list, you know, to elections, you EU elections, yeah, you, you this big community. So why don't you say do it? And I'm I'm gonna travel with you all over UK, and you know, you never know. I, I didn't really think I'm gonna get there because uh, you know how it works. It's always first. Who's ever first on the list? And he was first on the list in the Warsaw. Uh, would get to the parliament, but then you think about previous one, and you think, okay, he was first, and then after two years he quit, and he got his place to the second person. I'm thinking, why not? Let's try. So we travelled the UK, we met lots of fantastic people in here, and we decided as well not only persuade people to vote, but then be in the commissions as well, electoral commissions, because we know that elections are rigged always in Poland, always. Many, I would say, every European country, I, I wouldn't be surprised. So we did it. We were traveling the UK. We we met people who were uh, happy to be in the commissions, European uh, electoral commissions, all over the UK. And on the eve of uh, uh, elections, I mean the the election day in the evening, we on set on six, I believe, and a half percent. Bam, we there because it's, again, its threshold is five percent. I knew. I don't know if it's EU wide or it's only Polish again. With five percent, and we, yeah, we're there, we're there, we're happy. We wake up in the morning and we on po on four point something again. You know, they yeah. do it to us always. They do it to us always. Uh, whatever it is, you know, uh, we know people who, let's say, they vote in a small town in Poland. Let's say on the whole family, uh, five votes for Janusz Korwin-Mikke. Then you go on the uh, next day to the commission. You see on the door there's a list how many votes who Janusz Korwin-Mikke zero. <laughs> so yeah. so we know it happens. Yeah. Um, we didn't have enough people in commissions in Poland, and okay. in here, in here, we got uh, thirty-one percent of votes in in the UK. Yeah. So and yeah, that was the, the biggest share. And then all the parties got crazy about it. They they started hearing about us. You know, it's like, like how come he's got thirty-one percent on uh, in here in UK? Uh, so then, uh, Polish parliamentary elections in uh, November last year. And again, we we had lots of we put a lot of pressure on like people being in the commissions in Poland now because here was already uh, like all of us we knew we have to watch it and in Poland and we got it, but not only of not only us, uh, as you know, we Volnosc we part of Confederacja which is a confederation you can call it, we had to uh, set the alliance with the national party, and third one is. Uh, his Catholic party of uh, Grzegorz Brown, Greg Brown, you could call him, and yeah, together we established like a coalition. That was the only way to get there because we knew after years and years trying, this guy uh, was trying like every election, presidential election, yeah. also presidential election, every parliamentary election, and he never gave up, never, never gave up. Even now, he said, I went to bed in the evening thinking, oh, man, they're going to rig it anyway, you know, and he woke up in the morning and said, oh, I'm parliamentarian now, <laughs> let me go to work, you know. Yeah. So yeah, we got we got there, and yeah, you're probably gonna ask a few questions about confederation now. Well, it? that's that's a nice um, segue into the next one. Yeah, it was about the confederation. So it's it's your party, it's the national movement, um, and it's a Catholic group in as yeah. well. So yeah. it's it's a kind of it's a not exactly a meeting of minds, maybe. But yeah, <laughs> we we and national movement would be like enemies for years, always. And they could never get to the parliament, and we could never get to parliament. And that was the only option. We started thinking, oh my God, guys, the younger guys is a younger generation. Uh, then again, they're not that uh, like for freedom as we are, but obviously they kind of socialists like current government, but like a less socialist. Yeah, Our socialism would be better than theirs, the socialism, less taxes, uh, less regulations. Whereas ours, for us, uh, our program for them is like not acceptable. Like, what do you want? Like total freedom? No, it's impossible. But then again, we fall, we sat together and said, yeah, we have to do it, guys. There's no choice. Let's get there. And the plan was to split straight away. Once we get there, we okay. fall. Uh, 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 polling polls uh, were showing that we should get about 40 people there. So to get to, in Polish Parliament, if you have 15 people minimum, you have a club, so you can propose any changes, legislation, and everything. Okay. Legislation—that's the word I was I was missing. But only 11 of guests of us got, 
So then again, we're looking at each other. Oh my God, we have to stay together because otherwise it will be five, five and one. So again, guys, let's stay together. So we're together. And I'll tell you what, it's not that bad because yeah. we're learning from them a little bit. They're learning from us a little bit about uh, uh, we have good uh, economists in the party. So they try to explain them, those socialist guys, yeah. socialism doesn't work. And they start changing the tune a little bit, so which, which I'm really happy about. I was just going to say that. You're, yeah. you're, you're learning from them and they're learning from you. And yeah. Maybe they're, you're planting the seeds of libertarianism into this. Yeah. And <laughs> the know. funny thing is, is five of us uh, libertarians, five nationalists, and one fellow, the leader of his party, the Catholic party. Funny thing is, he's uh, ultra Catholic, like, like uh, nationalists are, yeah, but he's ultra free market as well. So it's funny, you yeah. know, and he actually, he's, uh, he's got the most important voice in the coalition because five, five, and he's one, yeah. yeah? So whatever, yeah. you know, they always try, <laughs> uh, Greg, you know, you know, issues like less taxes, yeah, of course, he will say less taxes, but then uh, about Catholic issues and so nationalists, are, oh yeah, yeah, obviously, of course, <laughs> we have yeah. to vote it, you know, so it's quite funny, but yeah, so we, we're doing well. Uh, recent polls are giving us, I'd say, roughly 10%. percent always Very good. Roughly ten percent. With that's that's a big change because you know the again the system is rigged. If we had six point something, we got eleven only. If we get like seven percent, half percent, we I think it would be like thirty of us. Yeah. And then on ten percent, roughly I'd say fifty, sixty uh, in uh, parliament, which is four hundred sixty of MPs. Sixty is quite a strong voice. Yeah, well, that's the next step. I mean, when you get to table motions in parliament and your speaking time is expanded, etc. Yeah. yeah. Um, very good. Um, I was going to say, what was I going to say about that? Um, I mean, that's kind of like true democracy, what you're doing, really. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, because you're 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 um, listening to perhaps someone that doesn't share the same opinions and trying to work together as a group. So when you know when you do eventually get power in the future, you know, yeah. <laughs> you, you'd be uh, well open to all sorts of collisions, maybe. Um, um, I, I, with um, let me see, with the national movement, they had an event in Dublin um, a while ago, and there was a huge uh, anti or protesting, and they, they had to cancel the event. I know they had to, they had it somewhere else, but they had cancelled it in the hotel. I mean, and it was a big write up in the Irish media about far right Polish movement. I mean, uh, I mean, whatever far right means these days. Yeah. I mean, I mean, how what what's it like in Poland? Do do they? When no no in Poland is quite okay. Uh, there there is much more freedom of speech in Poland than in Western Europe. Okay. Uh, obviously for obvious reasons, like we had the communism uh, for years, so people don't like to be censored. But, but is the party tainted like in Poland? Do people oh, say oh they're? Uh, yeah, they try to. They try to. You know, there is a big march, uh, independence march in uh, November always. So they always will say in newspapers like the fascists will be uh, marching through Warsaw, which is <laughs> complete crap. These people, you know, their fathers, their grandfathers, they fought uh, Nazis in, in, the, in the Second World War. Or people living in Warsaw, they they uh, descendants of, of great, you know, brave brave soldiers. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, that's proper bullshit. Uh, obviously, whatever is against the, uh, the governments now these days, uh, socialist governments is far right. I would describe nationalists as a uh, like lefties. <laughs> they, and we call them always lefties, you know, because when it comes to like taxes, things like this, or benefits, things like this, so they always like them higher and everything. So I would call them lefties, n never, never right. Yeah, well, uh, they're social socialists. Yeah, really, yes. So. <laughs> I mean, obviously, the, the term is changed, isn't it? We even know Nazi Party is national national <laughs> socialists. Yes, yeah, so they're socialists, but they try to abbreviate it to Nazi. Oh, Nazi, yeah. must, that's a bad word. But what well, do you for mean? For a libertarian, there's no difference between uh, yeah. national socialists and communists. They're just socialists. Yeah. So, you know, same. The left same. and right doesn't mean any difference to a libertarian. They're same, all... <laughs> same fascism. Uh, uh, Benito Mussolini, who was the founder of the, the fascism, he just said, I'm going to describe you fascism quickly in a few words. There's nothing against the state, everything within the state. It's nothing libertarian. It's nothing, nothing right in it. It's, it's all lefty, uh, like uh, communism uh, similar, isn't it? Like, that's all, all the same, is all the same. I would say fascism, Nazism, and socialism, communism, they're all the same. Um, so yeah, they, they describe like that quite often, but in Poland people know, and it means nothing really, it means nothing because we, uh, even even the stupidest people in Poland, they know we've been occupied by German, Germans, so how come 
you know, my neighbor could be Nazi if he was fighting with the, yeah, yeah. with, with Germans. So yeah, but in the West, people don't really understand in the West how it works. So they, yeah. But what can you do? Nothing. Just, just, just ignore it. Well, that was one of my questions later on. I mean, Polish people seem to be very based at them, you know, and that's because of your history. You had yeah. Nazi Germany on one side and communism on the other. So you know the kind of the evils of socialism, whether yeah. it's national socialism or, or um, communism. Do, do the young people understand that history? <sighs> less and less and less, because obviously history is uh, at school is a bit different now these days. They still teach about Second World War. Uh, but they try, yeah, there are, there are young movements, movements of young people who don't really understand history. Uh, so they would, yeah, gradually more, but then gradually more young people are on our side as well. So it's, yeah. there's more divided now. Uh, but yeah, some young people would, would confirm, say, uh, I'm uh, ashamed to be Polish when it's uh, November, March. How can they do that? But like I said, younger, older people wouldn't say that. Uh, whereas us, uh, as a libertarians, they cannot label us uh, fascists or anything because oh, yeah. so they try, they try uh, to make our leader to show as a what do you call it uh, an anti-feminist, anti-feminist. You know, you have to always pick something, isn't it? Yeah. Because yeah. Uh, our population is more homogeneous, uh, so they cannot label us racist. Yeah, because there is no really people from other countries living in Poland, some Ukrainians or maybe Belarus. So they can't use this, so they try everything. So yeah, uh, anti-feminist or what you call it, chauvinist, yeah, things like this, they try. Misogyny. But, and, yeah, uh, misogyny, misogyny yeah. <laughs> Even the word itself, it sounds so... I'm, this is like a word, like I, I'm a native English speaker, this is a word that yeah. like five years ago no one was talking about this word, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah, they keep trying, it's the same, like I said, but they're, they're, there's more freedom of speech in Poland. Uh, in Polish Parliament, you hear things you wouldn't hear here, because yeah. if, because if someone said uh, things they, they say in Polish Parliament, he would be straight away all news all over newspapers, and he would quit next day or she would quit next day, yeah. whatever whatever they said in Poland, and, um, and they try to censor them, but no, it's, it's still okay. I, I would prefer so that's that's two things, you know. And here um, it's easier to make money. Uh, it's still less taxes than in Poland. The main reason people flee Poland is taxes. Okay. For example, when I was traveling here uh, to explain people, sometimes people, they don't know why here, yeah, because people just don't think uh, things over why I'm leaving country. I'm just going there. Oh, my, my life is suddenly is easier. Is for example, like 12 and a half thousand in UK pounds you make is yours, yeah, until you start paying your taxes, whatever, over uh, you pay. In Poland, it doesn't exist like allowance free. <laughs> so you make, you make 100 pounds, give me 20 pounds straight away. Wow. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 20% income tax. Also, uh, national insurance contribution. Oh my God, in Poland it's 300 pounds a month. Okay. Uh, national <laughs> insurance. So then again, just imagine you, uh, how much? 300 pounds, yeah. 1,500 1, zloty, yeah. Let's say you make 5,000, uh, which is 1,000 pounds. Okay. Uh, yeah, 5,000 Polish. Let's say 1,000 pounds. Okay, we're easy for, for listeners. You make thousand pounds in Poland straight away. Three hundred pounds national insurance contribution. You get seven hundred. Then you give twenty percent of uh, seven hundred, which is hundred fifty again. So you got uh, five fifty left, and then all the taxes, obviously. Okay. Yeah, everything. Wow. Uh, straight away, they, they give you only half of your wages on your on your hand. You know, you don't get like here thousand. Here is thousand. Whereas in Poland, thousand is five hundred. So it's still a communist country then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's still, still, oh yeah, the, the old, all the like officers in, in offices, oh my God, they come in. Even, so, if, even if you go to the office, to, you want to buy your driving license or register your car, you still have to go to the office to register your car, can you believe it? And yeah. you have to take off the, the plates because if you move from another uh, part of Poland, other different letters, like in Germany, for example, I don't know about Switzerland. Yeah, Switzerland is the same, you know, Zurich, or, or whatever, you have different plates, yeah, yes? Yeah, so you yeah, bought it from yeah. the other part of Poland, you have to go there, clean nicely the plates, go to the office, wait for like two hours, put it on the table, and she will take it from you, okay. she will give you a stamp, or she will ask you ID, she will look in your face if it is you or not, and she will, and all day spent, you know, in office because you register your car. So still mentality, like communist mentality. Yeah. And then the, yeah. Well, I can I can see then, if, the, if it is such a big thing, then you're sure your party must be, 
you know, getting really popular because no one likes to pay tax, you know. Oh yeah, of course, of course, yeah. But then again, they will make a, they will make a devil out of our leader, especially on other parliamentarians as well. You know, our leaders. They, they hate yeah. women. They hate children. They 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 want to kill all children. Once they get to the power, there will be no taxes. There will be no taxes. Uh, the old children will die. There will be no okay. hospitals. There will be nothing. You know. So that's how they yeah. demonize us. Yeah, who's gonna build the, the hospitals and the yeah, roads and yeah, all that see. bullshit, you know? <laughs> yeah, funny, funny thing is, uh, we always say that NHS must be destroyed now, must be finished, must be private health service. So you see, and they say, no, 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 if there was a private health service, the people would be dying. Look what's happening now in UK. <laughs> people are just dying at home, you know? And yeah, just, yeah, mm. yeah. Um, yeah, I was just gonna say with, the, with regards to communism, I mean, it's, it's really not that long ago. I mean, it's like, um, even like my lifetime, Poland mm -hmm. was in the Eastern Bloc and stuck to Soviet Russia. So it's not, it's, people tend to forget that, don't they? Like it's, yeah. time moves so fast, but really yeah. it's, is it? Yeah, I, I, uh, I remember, I remember 1981, like I said, I told you the martial law, I remember, I mean, I was like, like uh, nine years old boy and I looked through the window, like what the hell is happening there? And there's uh, lots of police everywhere, gas everywhere, like a tear gas everywhere, even in the houses. We had to close the windows. And I remember the moment when I looked through the window, in, I, I was living in like quite a big city in center, in center of the town. My mother was in the next window and between us just a bit of the wall, of the brick wall. And a fellow just shoot at us with the, like a rocket. Oh. And you have, a, you know, the bricks are covered with the, what do you call it, plaster. I don't know that the attempts build it. And then this, this bit of plaster just like fell off. He just shot, shot just between us, a little bit left or right. I would lose my head on my mom, whatever. Obviously we shut the windows, you know, hid in the house. And yeah, it was a bit scary. However, my parents tried, uh, <clears throat> tried not to show they scared, do not stress us and everything. So it, it wasn't that, that scary experience. Uh, after years, I would say, after like two weeks, two weeks to flatten the curve. Uh, we went back to school from January and the martial law was for like one and a half year. You couldn't go out after 10 p.m. Uh, before 6 a.m. Obviously there was no many shops anyway, so it was just uh, essential shops open and people were really depressed and uh, for after one and a half year. But then, like I said, they knew they bankrupting, communism is bankrupting everything. They established this new Solidarność, which will take over the power but yeah, there was the same people still, but different faces. Mm -hmm. So, so saying that, if you don't mind, I just like when this happened here in March last year, I knew what's coming. Day one, straight away, I saw exactly the same moment because I, my friend from London, sent me a picture of uh, seven police officers, plain clothes officers, on the day one of the lockdown. And they were on the street smoking cigarettes and laughing, you know, like a mafia members, like, oh, that's our city now. Yeah, the, the streets empty. And he sent me the picture and I saw exactly like kind of like memories from when, when I told you just now looking through the window where, where police was everywhere. I was like, oh, my God, I know what's happening. I was so scared in March now. And you know that here we are, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, like, it, it kind of goes back to what we said. That's probably why... Um... Poland is quite based at the moment, and and I, in Ireland and in England, I think as well. You you in protest marches against the lockdown, you will see there's mm. quite a substantial um, amount of Polish people at these protests, which is which is great, you know, because yeah. they they know they know what's coming, yeah. they, they've experienced it. Um, so I mean, from communism to capitalism, that tr transition. I mean, we've seen in Russia. Um, there was a kind of a rape of the country with the resources and oligarchs got rich. What happened in Poland with that move from one to the other? So yeah, the, the 1988 or 99, I don't remember now, there was a, uh, they canceled all the rules and they said kind of like in UK was, what is not prohibited is allowed. And only firearms, I believe, and I think just three uh, sectors of the economy were not allowed to do for anyone, and the rest was allowed. You could uh, you could uh, deal with the petrol or diesel without any license. You could go to the petrol station, uh, get ten cans of, of it, and just sell it. You know, on the street, like I'm selling petrol and everything. That was yes. the most that was the most free country in the world for <laughs> for Perfect. years. You could. It was so funny, man. You could 
you could deal with the drugs on the street because there was no drugs during the communism. Uh, communism. So they didn't even know what's that. So there was no rules on that. Eh? So okay. I remember young boys uh, puffing, you know, weed and uh, or having in the packets. Police will stop them and they say, well, what you got? Oh, it's marijuana. What? Well, you don't know. So they would call the station, police station. Oh, they have marijuana. What the hell is marijuana? Just leave them alone. I don't know what's <laughs> marijuana. So it's so funny because, you know, before they had to uh, vote it in the parliament, make mm -hmm. a laws. I think it was like one year you could sell cocaine on the, on the table on the street. It was so funny. But everything you could sell. Okay. Because in, in one day, you could double up your money. All, all like there was no taxes before because, you know, companies, they would pay you just money. Yeah. So there was no taxes established. There was no national insurance contribution, nothing. So like I said, suddenly uh, from communism, like to the free free country, you could go. For example, I would say I would take two uh, packets of cigarettes, uh, large ones, yeah, there's 20, and they allowed us to go to the West Berlin then. It was still Eastern Germany, and it was the wall, uh, but from Poland, without stopping in East Germany, could go to West Germany. So oh, I lived by okay. the border. Okay. So by the train, yeah, by the train, I would go there, one hour train, I would sell double, for the double price two packs of cigarettes. I would buy there in Aldi, whatever, the whole crate of uh, beers in the cans, which never exist in <laughs> Poland. So I would come back there, I would go straight away, sell it to the wholesaler, and from like uh, 100 pounds, I would make 400 pounds a day. You know, just, you could have oh. the money was literally on the street these days. You could open up shops and everything. Markets start, started flourishing. Uh, shops, private shops, ever. oh my God, that was like a golden era then. But obviously, European Union started looking at us, and Poland started developing so quickly. And, uh, you know, and they said, no, 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 stop, guys. No, it can't be like that. Just stop. You have to join European Union. Uh, you have to start uh, accepting our rules. You cannot you just to, like. You yeah, have to be just, a good boy. <laughs> yeah. You cannot get rich like, like the people got rich. And uh, like you said, obviously, there was a, a like in oligarchs in Russia. Yeah, the same in Poland. There was big, big uh, government companies like factories and everything. So suddenly they got and suddenly somehow. They became the the owners of it. Fair enough, you know. It's much better if they if they have it than is government's factory where we have to like what do you call it mine mining uh, you know under the under the uh, when you coal yeah coal mines coal, coal mines mine? coal, coal mine. mines yeah still they exist in Poland I and mean, we have to all budget put money in there because not it's just, you know sustainable and it's just we just put money in there if there was private fine if it was good company they would make profit if it was bad they would collapse you know but but yeah, uh, they got rich. But at the same time, we got richer. People started getting making money, building houses. Or Poland changed like in these five years, changed dramatically. It was so, and as suddenly cars from the from the west started coming to the the old like communist cars went to the you know scrapyards. Uh, so it changed a lot. But like I said, it didn't last for long. Okay. I would say two, till 2000. I would say it was the most, and then we signed the agreements with you. <laughs> slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, slowing down. And, uh, Germans would, like I said, I lived by the border. We would deal with Germans, Eastern Germans. They would come to Poland because everything was cheaper, petrol, uh, cigarettes, food, obviously much better, still more natural and everything. So, oh, my God, gold, gold, golden era. <laughs> oh, okay. That's very interesting, yeah. Yeah, like... Um, Las uh, Vegas. <laughs> um, okay, let me see where I'm at oh, with my questions. Um, I just want to go back to the, the time you ran for election, Sebastian, because um, I'm always interested when people's stories about elections. I mean, was that your first time taking part? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It was. It was. It was funny because, like I said, we. I'm a, I'm a vice president, you'd say, of our like UK branch of the party. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there was a fellow who's fully educated, very clever, like almost, you could say, philosopher, uh, our um, our leader here. But he said, oh, that was natural choice. Yeah, uh, Jacob, you, you go, you go and you, you, you try. And he wasn't that happy. And then we have a few drinks and everything. And I'm waking up in the morning and they're congratulating me. <laughs> it's like, what? what are you talking about, guys? Right? Uh, oh, you just said yesterday, you're going we're gonna to run for the MP. MEP, I said, oh, well, whatever, if I said so, I said so. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it was interesting, you know, obviously it was a bit scary, you know, to go and, and, and then when uh, our leader came in, Janusz Korwin-Mikke, so he's got a big audience, so let's say it was a few hundred people on the, on the, uh, there waiting for him, and I had to talk before him, so I know some, maybe people start saying, just shut up, give us Janusz Korwin-Mikke, we want to listen to him, not to you, but yeah, obviously, 
yeah, I started becoming more more confident talking to people, and then yeah, it was good experience, you know. And then, and then I'm hoping I'm hoping uh, soon uh, next uh, Polish elections because we have every four years elections, so it's now three years left. So I'm I'm sure we'll be stronger now, and then yeah, more people know me. You never know. Okay, very good. Yeah, that's good. The Polish vodka. You never know what you get up to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so what about Poland these days then? I mean. Uh, in the news, there was the recent kerfuffle with the European Union. You had yourself in Hungary. What 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 was that all about? Was that the con conditions were tied to the COVID, and it was but it, it was really an attack on your democracy, was it? Or is uh, is it COVID as well? But no, it's all about you know because they still kind of the government resisting taking any refugees. Um, the is all LGBT issues as well all the time. So they not. They cannot agree on things, so the, the the European Union was threatening they will not send them as much money as was agreed before. If they do not take refugees, they not agree to the whole EU agenda. However, they did. Uh, whatever you think is, the current government is pretty much the same as the previous one, like a leftist government. It's okay. just a different different package, you know. They they wrapped up, you know, the same stuff in the different more like a national. Uh, flag, you know, because they try to show themselves uh, like they're, they're defending our identity, national values, but it's not really, right? Because um, we know that the, the agenda is set by EU anyway. Once we signed the uh, Lisbon Treaty, which which actually the current uh, government uh, signed years ago, they were in power. Then was there like more leftist government in power. Now again them. But they signed the Lisbon Treaty. Once we signed the Lisbon Treaty, they knew what they're doing. We we lost sovereignty, so so you can be fooled a little bit if you don't live there. I mean, many many Polish voters are fooled as well. You know, they will always say, "Oh, the president, current president, and he will never give up to European Union. He's gonna defend us." But it's not the case, really. Uh, okay. Trust, trust me, is, is, is not is not is not much no much difference to the, the any other government. Okay, so you're saying that they kind of really accepted it but they have to pretend yeah, okay. yeah exactly yeah. well yeah that this, those the people made us to do it now because the other okay. guys would sign it with a smile on their faces <laughs> they did sign but they were not happy signing it so that's okay. the difference well that's politics really yeah I mean, well you know ireland we voted against the lisbon treaty you know yeah yeah and, we, and we, voted, we voted against the maastricht treaty i think and the lisbon treaty and Mm -hmm. We had to go back again, and you yeah. know, they promised everything to us, and yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. It's all, it's all politics, like you said. It's all the same. If you see the, uh, you know, people uh, talking one thing one day, it's talking another thing one day. You just don't trust them. Like I said, I always interested. I was always interested a little bit in politics, but like I said, I've seen Janusz Korwin-Mikke talking uh, to the audience in Poland when he was still like. Uh, 40, 30 years old fellow. I saw him on like old YouTube films, and then I saw him in London, like before the EU elections. Like it would be like six years ago now, 2014, I believe. Yeah, or seven. Yeah, 2013. He came to London. I was like, what the hell? It's like deja vu, man. But the guy is like 30 years old. There, he says the same. I can repeat every word he says. You know, after, yeah. yeah. So that's how we stick to to, to him. You know. Nothing really seems to change, really. <laughs> yeah, and another thing interesting to the listeners: the the Polish current right wing government is much much more leftist than the previous one. The socialists, they established uh, like a, um, like a childcare uh, money where this, which didn't didn't exist uh, before. It was kind of you could get some uh, tax rebate if you had children, and now they establish like hundred pounds a month. For every child you have, to so like a basic income, like a, uh, you you have it, and all the all the benefits, they more 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 socialists, they borrow more money. I mean the same in UK, isn't it? It's a Tory government, they borrow more money. They they do the same agenda. Look at the, what Boris Johnson is saying. Now we're gonna build back better. Now, like I remember, uh, and I, I was learning German as well because, like I said, I was uh, living on the. Uh, German border, so obviously I, I had a choice. I couldn't speak English then, so I, I picked German. <clears throat> and our teacher was a very good teacher because he wouldn't teach us only grammar and everything. He was showing us actually what was happening before the World War and Mr. Adolf's speeches. 
I could I could see Boris now saying the same because I would say I'm gonna give you highways in the whole Germany. Everyone's gonna get Volkswagen, uh, and it's gonna be peace like forever peace. And we're gonna build, we're gonna build. And I see Boris Johnson talking the the same shit now. Yeah, yeah, with the promise everything. Um, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll be building. We'll be like working, working harder, harder, but we're gonna be richer <laughs> and everything. It's but don't forget, trouble. we're all in this together. Together, <laughs> uh, we're all in this together, build back better, and everything. Yeah. I, I, I smell the crap, you know, from my <laughs> way. I can, I can tell you know, populist. Yeah, but the, I mean, the, the, in the West, like I mean, you see it. You, you live in the United Kingdom, and you see the BBC. They always kind of taint Poland in a negative manner. It's not progressive, and it's yeah, 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 anti LGBT, yeah. all that yeah. rubbish, and the abortion thing. I don't know what's happening, but yeah. So, the, so how do you what what do Polish people think of that? I mean, I mean, it's like it's just just that's your it's like it's that's Poland. I mean, why uh, why is it why are they picking on Poland? I mean, I mean, yeah, there, there have to be some fights. I mean, the, the, this government, like I said, they will eventually give up. Probably they will ask for more money and everything, but that's the way they just act. I know Hungarian Prime Minister Orban as well, uh, and and a Polish Prime Prime Minister. But as as far as I know, I think. Uh, it's all agreed by now, is it, uh, Mario? I think it is all agreed by now. It's, okay. uh, it's no change. They kind of sold Poland, but like I said, they will hide some facts from the public, and they will, and some facts they will say, "Oh, we had to do this just for your good, okay. for your own good." But yeah, it's no like I say, guys, guys, don't don't trust whatever they say. There must be some kind of fight on TV. Eh? They have to show like. Okay, so it's uh, political theater then. Almost. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. okay. Um, is the economy in Poland doing well at the moment? Well, I mean, COVID, it's kind of wiped out yeah, everything. Yeah, that, see, that's... Be that, that's before the, COVID, what was it like? It was not too bad, to be honest. That's what they say. They're borrowing more and more than every year, like than the previous year, every year more. They were happy saying to announce budget without deficit for the first time. However, uh, the, yeah, the national debt is, oh my God, there is a uh, like a counter in the center of Warsaw, uh, Warsaw so you can see like rolling, rolling, you, everyone okay. can see. So in that, uh, like we've never been before, I think it's still compared to other countries, Western countries with 60% of uh, GDP, I think we're in debt. So yeah, but there were, houses were building, you know, you could see quite big uh, houses. I think if you, it's difficult for the young, young people, that's why they come here, they make a few quid, they build their house there. Once they have their house, it's okay, you can live. Once you have a house in Poland, it's okay, the country is safer than Western Europe, there is no fights on the street, nothing like that. And then, like I said, there's more freedom of speech, so you feel more comfortable between people. Mm -hmm. uh, you can say pretty much whatever you think you want to say, you don't have to control your mind like here. And yeah, that's the reason, I don't know if you know, Janusz Korwin Mika was uh, banned from Facebook two weeks ago, after 10 years, I'd say. Uh, he was one of the first users and he had like million million followers. And he was banned from uh, Facebook, you know. If they could even translate what he says in Polish Parliament, they would just shoot him, man. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, there is a, a trend at the moment, Facebook, Twitter, and yeah. YouTube is banning. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm banned, I'm suspended from Twitter for using bad language. Yeah. <laughs> like 12 words or what do you mean? Swear. Yeah, and it was amongst people that it was the similar mindset. I wasn't targeting at anybody. I, I was just amongst similar-minded people. I was just using... Yeah. Use the word cunt and whatever, something like yeah. that. It's like schoolboy stuff, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it, it is crazy. I, I wonder what's gonna, how it's gonna end. There's many platforms now. However, they're not that popular. I checked recently with my friend. I think YouTube, Twitter, or Facebook, the main ones. I think they have like a three billion users each, like two point seven something. Whereas the other platforms have like three million. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's a huge difference. However, yeah. I, know, I think Parler is a Parler quite doing quite well as a Twitter. I don't know if you've been there. Yeah, Parler, but it's yeah. Like, you kind of do want the interaction with the the other side as well, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you don't want it to be an echo chamber. Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens, but yeah, it's worse and worse. However, I think without uh, like YouTube or Facebook completely, whatever happens now, I think more and more people would. Uh, accept whatever's, whatever's happening. So they try to censor people, but there's again, new people on YouTube, new on Facebook, and they keep trying. So at, at least, at least we're not completely silenced yet.
Yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's good for saving on your material and everything, bit shoot and parlor, um, mm -hmm. in case it just vanishes one day in YouTube or etc. Yeah. Um, what about COVID and the lockdown in Poland? Is oh, it's bad as well. You know, in uh, they they've done lockdown in March and April, similar as here, but there was no uh, excess deaths. In in fact, in fact, it was less deaths than. Uh, uh, than in previous years, whereas here in UK was like a, uh, was peak, but then again, I'm I'm 100% sure wherever is harsher lockdown, the more deaths occur, occur because you know people just die at home, they scared go to hospital. I've seen in UK and uh, March people like queuing uh, uh, in front of the hospital, like pushing each other. I want to get there first. I want to get tested first. I want to go to bed in in a, in a hospital, and they were just dying there. And um, in Poland, it was quite strict lockdown no excess deaths and then it was uh, presidential elections in uh, may they moved it to june and president the current president he was uh, he was second term he went outside with the polish government they said the virus is gone let's go to the party on the street let's elect the president again let's go to the voting uh, booth and let's vote for the president he became a president and a virus came back <laughs> which everyone was predicting it was just uh, obviously we know it was bullshit so they uh, they let people out uh, like uh, fun uh, it was nice time as well may june uh, summertime and then yeah parties everywhere let's elect they elected it straight away two weeks later oh sorry guys the virus is back go back home go back to work and everything and now it's very bad they're going crazy now there's strict lockdown over Christmas, over New Year, they're gonna establish a police, uh, what do you call it, like curfew mm -hmm. uh, after 10 p.m. Uh, and excess deaths is huge, not COVID though. They know, they just say, oh, uh, normally you would like 30,000 people die a month. Uh, November, 60,000 people died, so double. And 2.5% of it is from COVID related deaths, and all the 29,000 is just a heart attacks, you know, and the cancer and everything. They know it, but they say, oh, that's the way it is. Sorry, there's a virus around, so it's bad. It's same as everywhere. Yeah, it's the same. I mean, it's kind of like uh, they bamboozle you with statistics, and it's people yeah. are not, they're tuning out at this stage, and they're just accepting all these things without even questioning. And, and, yeah, um, yeah it's, it's more or less the same everywhere. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not too bad, but we live beside Germany, and you know, it's like the, the towns are like ghost towns, you know, people are not, not they're staying at yeah. home, you know. <laughs> I don't so, know how they can, they, can, they can go on like that. I just don't know. It's like <laughs> economies. Just... Yeah. Um, just, I know we're, we're getting to the hour soon enough, Sebastian, but uh, thanks for your time anyway. But uh, just um, talk about Brexit. I mean, what's your party's position on Brexit or the, set, oh, the, the whole European Union project? Oh yeah, the European Union. Yeah, obviously the the Janusz Korwin-Mikke. Every speech in Parliament, every every day, every time he would end up saying. And moreover, moreover, I think the European Union must be destroyed. He would always finish his speech like that. So yeah, we obviously always against uh, like big government bodies like this. We were happy with the Schengen Agreement. Uh, you can freely travel. You can um, cooperate with other countries. But then. Once the Lisbon Treaty was signed, the European Union wasn't the same anymore. So obviously we against the European Union. And we, some people uh, in the party were happy uh, that uh, Great Britain is leaving. But then again, some people were saying it's not that good for us really, because we kind of try to be anti-EU and we're losing like allies, yeah? Because like Britain would, was uh, at least uh, like trying to be anti-EU. Uh, however, we know, like uh, David Cameron, when he lost the referendum, he was shocked, isn't it? <laughs> he just like in the mornings, like, what the hell, we lost. So yeah, uh, so yeah. Hopefully, I'm hoping the the well, I was hoping that the departure of UK from EU would be like beginning of the destruction of European Union. But you don't you don't know what's going to happen. We're not really living actually. We I just found out it's not agreed uh, yet, and if anything, but. With the current climate, this COVID, we, we just, you just, you just, you just seen, you just think like uh, the the whole um, Brexit uh, talk is like a distraction from bloody COVID. They talk about like fishing quotas and everything. Whereas the the whole economy here is just is just burning, is collapsing, and we're talking about like oh, about cold 
you know, how much cold you can, you can, you know, fish and whatever. I, I just don't get it. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I think he has to get Brexit done or to be. Just yeah, hopefully, pro. hopefully. I, I, I was always <laughs> yeah pro, and I was happy that we're living. And I was hoping for big change in UK, like uh, dealing with the USA more now, uh, Australia, the like Commonwealth, and everything. But I don't know. We'll see. But the, people will say that. Has has the EU not been good to Poland because of the free movement and free travel for Polish people? Um, no, the, the thing is, people don't understand. The EU's got nothing to do with the free movement. It's a Maastricht Treaty, is it? That's it. End of story. A Maastricht Treaty was signed uh, long ago before EU, EU it became EU. It was it wasn't EU. EU actually became European Union and uh, when the Lisbon Treaty was signed in 2009, I believe. Yeah, and the Maastricht Treaty was signed before. And it was good. And then, uh, sorry, Maastricht and the Schengen area. Okay. Schengen area, yeah, it was signed. Yeah, so it's good. Yeah, movement of people and the goods. That was good, obviously, yeah, for Poland. I, I think it should be. I shouldn't be asking anyone if I can go there or if, if I can, you know, deal with the trade with the, my neighbors. Uh, leaving there, that's different. Okay, fine. Just staying there, leaving there, there. You have to obey the laws. You have to ask for permission. You have to maybe start paying taxes there, whatever. But movement of people to work. And to trade, yeah, that's the way it okay. should without without even asking anyone. Well, that's an important point to make, I think, because the Schengen Agreement, I mean, Switzerland is part of that, and Switzerland yeah. is not part of the EU, yeah. so it's, you know, that's I, that's that's a good answer. I didn't, I wasn't yeah. thinking about that, yeah. Um, I just wanted to ask you about libertarianism, just just quickly, uh, uh, um, and then I'll just wind it up, if that's okay, Sebastian. Yeah. Um, you were yeah, on... That's fine, we have another, like, 10 minutes, easy. Okay, that's okay. Yeah. So on the, I, I was listening to you on the Eclectic Vibrations radio yeah. show, and I heard you say that, and you, you made the point at the start as well, that libertarianism, it's you guys in Poland, and it's Ron Paul, and perhaps politically it's not really catching on yeah. worldwide. But my question is, is that not really, I mean, libertarianism is kind of anti-political at heart. I mean, it's, it's kind of anti-government, so it's kind of you're trying to, you know, you're going against the true ideals by maybe going into government and. I will, you know what? Not us. I don't say so. Our leader, as well, like most of us, is uh, like uh, not anti-government. We want like strong government, but small. Yeah, but when I say it, like, it's kind of the idea that um, you know you're trying you're trying to dictate. You know, you're you're setting agendas in government. You're setting policies. You, if you are in government, you would be doing this. I mean. And you're trying to dictate what ways people will things that people will be doing, and is it is is it not really against the essence of libertarianism, where it should be just everybody kind of? No, really. Like I said, I repeat, strong mm. but small government. Yes, strong army, strong police force, obviously to to follow the the uh, <clears throat> courts, courts, money usually, uh, mostly the courts, police. Uh, army, obviously the international politics and things like this, but that's it. Uh, private NHS, private okay. schools, uh, everything really private. All business, <laughs> everything yeah. business should, should be private. But uh, apart from yeah, like I said, it's strong government, authoritarian government, which is which is uh, people uh, follow, and like obviously international affairs. We not you know I'm not qualified even to uh, to talk about things like this. But the, about maximum maximum liberty within the country. Okay. Um, so yeah, like I said, so that's a kind of you can be crucified if you say destroy NHS. But <laughs> yeah. you can yeah. especially I hate I hate this institution. You know, it's overpaid. It's like corrupt uh, institution. Uh, schools definitely schools private. You know, they can be for me. They can be leftist schools. They can be uh, rainbow schools. I don't care. And uh, the market will uh, verify who's going to get good job, you know, later. If you be talking about rainbows and unicorns all, all like seven years of school, then go interview for interview with, the, you know, your employer. They'll say like, yeah, get out, you know, <laughs> well, you know, nothing about life or about your job. Yeah. So, yeah, it doesn't look like that. We're not anarchists. Actually, uh, most of us, you'll be surprised, we're monarchists. We okay. would like to be like a monarch in the country, not democracy, democracy where we're always yeah. 51 uh, against 49, they're always fighting, you know, <laughs> uh, and, and, and it's always stupid, you know, there's more stupid than clever people in the world, so democracy must be really stupid yeah. um, system. But, so, 
I would be coming out from an anarchist libertarian position, so I would just get in to break it all up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know the, the, the state like this can't la last forever or for long, because there's always the people who will take o take over the power, yeah, <laughs> mafias or, or, or gangs, whatever. That's why it has to be strong government with strong police and army. But the rest, minimum rules, minimum rules. Obviously, yeah. don't hurt another person. That's it, you know, don't interfere with their property. And then that's it. Like I remember, like I told you, 89, 88, just, you know, if you like uh, standing with the raw meat uh, on the table uh, outside your house and someone's going to buy it from you, and that's why not. There is another shop, nice with the meat, raw meat is a nice, uh, you know, fridge and everything, nice package, go there, a bit more expensive, more cheaper. If you like it, just buy it. No controls like uh, we have this, Sanitarian, sanitarian. I don't know how to again. Don't know the English word. They were checking in the shops in Poland if the the food is Health good. And safety if, and, yeah, yeah. So if, if it's fresh, it's not your business, man. If I want to buy it, I buy it. Funny yeah. thing is, again, like I said, uh, uh, I was in UK already, and uh, I had an English fellow a friend, and he says I was buying tomatoes on the on the market on the stale. And he said, I would never buy them. I, he said, I, I said, why? Because there's no date on them. There is no date, you know, they use it. I said, man, just look at it. You smell it and you, and you, you know, sometimes taste it. Yeah, because they let you taste it. Oh, it's good, man, I'm buying it. So no, 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 I have to have date. I have to see the date and I'm going to throw it away whenever the date expires. So yeah, that's, that's the thing, yeah. you know, it's just, uh, yeah, but yeah, no, 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 no. Um, that's um, completely different, strong government. But, yeah, well, I'm a minarchist then, and yeah. Um, yeah, maybe government's just basically for administration and yeah, protection administration, of the citizens. Army, police, and courts. That's yeah, no, that, that's, yeah. I, I could settle for that. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so, the free market, I mean, we are heading that way in, in certain regards with post and transport, air travel, refuse collection, um, a lot of things that war government run is slowly, you know, in the hands of the free market. Or at least that was the idea. Um, but the, I was thinking later that the problem with that is that you used to pay taxes for all those things. But now there's a vacuum. So it's, it's all crony, it's all crony government jobs and NGOs and um, government quangos. Yeah. So, you know, even even with that positive, you know, um, you know. I I mean, it's not really free market because, like you said, lots of private companies do it, but big companies which can follow certain rules of the government and just yeah, set yeah. the rules for them. And the big companies don't like capitalism. They, they like socialism. Once they become big, they like capitalism when they're small. Once they grow, they want socialism. They want more rules. Yeah. That's what happened in Poland. Again, like I told you, you could you could trade with anything like on the store. I will just keep mentioning it because that's how some businesses were starting. But then. But then big markets started coming to uh, Eastern Europe, to Poland as well, and they still couldn't compete with us because there was a big market. Let's say they will be selling uh, butter, uh, like a bread butter, yeah? I always, people don't understand me sometimes because there's, there's butter for the fish as well, yeah? And so my accent, you like, they don't understand me. But oh, I, I, I understood, I understood. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, and they, would, they would try to sell it uh, very cheap, because they wanted like destroy or small business around. So like, you know, sometimes markets do like one or yeah. two products and people will be queuing there. But because they were selling that so cheap, let's say for like 10p. So the, the queue was so big, I would get there quickly. I would get two big boxes. I would stand in front of the market and I would sell it for like double price quicker because people didn't want to go there and wait. And that was free market. But yeah. obviously they, and it's like, oh my God, we can't cope with that. So they started going and like sending like uh, controls. Yeah, uh, you don't have a toilet on the market. Uh, you don't have the fresh water, running water to, to wash your hands every time on the market. We're closing you down. We're closing you down. And you could, you know, obviously, if you made more money, you could build yourself the better shop and everything. But then again, if you build yourself a better shop and more expensive, you put more, more rent and everything, and your products become more yeah, expensive. But yeah. if you have a small store, you don't pay rent on it. So you could sell cheaper, cheaper stuff to people, cheaper stuff to people. But then... Uh, yeah, that, they started like controls, no toilet, not this, no this. You don't have a changing room for your stuff. I don't have a bloody stuff, man. I'm by myself here. No, no, changing room and everything. So that's how with the with the well, rules, they started closing us down. Yeah, you know? well, there's, there's like people say that, it, it, you know, capitalism is terrible, but there's never been really a free market, really, because uh, there is always that government interfering with all the rules uh, and regulations. 
So, you know, we've never really seen a true... Well, you did that yeah. time period in Poland, but it's yeah. very rare to see real true free market economies because... And, and the thing with COVID now... Yeah. It's kind of going one step forward and it's two steps back. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of yeah. wiping out all the it's, it's small terrible, businesses. Enough. And well, I remember I came to UK, so I was uh, working for uh, William Hill, bookmakers, for years, and then I was interviewing people uh, for the jobs. So obviously, I was trained to do that. So don't ask this question. You know, it's not your business. You're not supposed to. Everyone's different. People, individuals. Don't ask him if any any like uh, sicknesses, things like this. You're not supposed to. Whereas now, like all must be the same, okay? You don't want a vaccine or whatever. Oh, are you sick? Yeah, prove you're sick. You don't want to wear a mask. They should prove me you're sick. Uh, oh, come on. Suddenly, I have to prove to everyone who I am. And, you know, if if I'm if I'm able to wear a mask or whatever, so all, everything disappeared. And you know what? Then again, I'm thinking about like uh, Second World War, Nazi Germany. Uh, that like, how could this happen? How could people cooperate with government so much? I can I can see now, yeah, and it's yeah. scary. We all can see it now. I think this vaccine now. Will we all have to? The people who are vaccinated and not vaccinated, will we have to yeah. distinguish with yeah. wearing a wristband or something? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Okay, just to find the future then, just to finish up. Um, so, what's the future of the Confederation and Fair Party? Can can it's after COVID and the elections then, I mean... If they let sure. us, you know, to have another elections <laughs> in Europe or wherever Three in the world. Three years' time. Yeah, we, we're looking good. Uh, we're looking good. we always 9, 10, 11%, which would give us 50, 60 parliamentarians. Oh, man, that would be revolution. That would be revolution eventually. Even now, it's 11 of us. So when we talk... Uh, the, sometimes the whoever lead the the no, I don't remember that again word I lost. We will have a microphone switched off sometimes, even by like for for like talking a bit too long or a bit like things they don't like. But it's always now. But obviously now we are a lot lot of on TV because they're like from like even from Westminster or whatever. You know you can you can listen all day. There's I think special channel and you can watch everything that's happening there. So yeah, they don't like it, but people like. Uh, suddenly they open their eyes and like, oh my God, yeah, you can say that, yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, he's right, isn't it? Yeah. You know, why is this government for years, uh, uh, for example, this now uh, talking always anti you, anti you, and we deeper and deeper within you. So like, like that's what we're saying, like guys, you just like hypnotized, yeah, the voters. You know, they're talking anti you, and we every year we're more into you. So yeah, um, we we're gonna do well if there will be elections. We're gonna do well. Yeah. And, uh, well, yeah. COVID might COVID could swing the other way. It might wake people up, you know. Yeah, yeah. I'm when, hoping. When, when the money runs out, then the fun yeah. begins, you know. <laughs> I'm not giving. I'm not giving up. I remember like 1980s. Uh, we talk about Nazi Germany as well quite often, and we scared what's happened. But then people it didn't even talk about it because they didn't know. Now we know what may happen potentially if we do not act. So yeah, I'm hoping as well. Yeah, and uh, and it's good to remember that. Poland survived Nazi yeah. Germany and it survived yeah. the communists. And look at Poland now; it's it's still standing. Um, what about yourself? Just to finish, are, are you're in this for the long haul? <laughs> Hopefully, next elections definitely I'll try. Okay, uh, I'll get myself on the list. Uh, like I said, we have in a coalition, so I wouldn't get good because the plan before was uh, uh, the our leader is on the first. Uh, play because uh, for the listeners as well here, Poles who live uh, out of Poland can vote or take part in elections from the Warsaw only. Warsaw, uh, you know. Okay. Again. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So I'm not from Warsaw, but more and more people know me know me now. In Warsaw, people outside uh, Poland know me. UK, USA. Sometimes I get phone calls. Australia, Germany. Uh, so people know me. So I will try, like I said, but I may not get good place because we're in coalition. So we always we have fights, probably you know, sure between enough. which way. Yeah, but yeah, even now with the, you know, if people know me, if and if I was on the on the like a tenth on the list, whatever, you know, I'll I'll keep trying. Yeah, hopefully, okay. hopefully, and hopefully, if, I'll be there. And if people want to check out you or your party, have you got a your YouTube page? What's the name of it? Yeah, Confederacja. There is a YouTube. 
page, I believe. Uh, Facebook is quite big. We're not banned yet from Facebook. <laughs> yeah, Confederacia is Confederation, yeah. Okay, I'll leave a link. And your, your personal page is in your name, isn't it, Sebastian Ross? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, okay, I've nothing more to say, but uh, thank you sincerely for giving me your time and answering my questions and sharing your insight with us in Polish politics. So thanks, Sebastian, yeah. and enjoy the, enjoy the weekend. You're welcome.